going through a, a chart, a complex chart here. I'm going to talk about um, how to do this, how to go through it. First off, where to look in the very beginning. Time signature. Um, it'll tell you what kind of style is up here. You even get a tempo marking sometimes. Your quarter note equals this tempo, for example. This tells you to not play for eight bars. The dynamic markings are below the staff, as you can see. That's a P for piano. Um, and the composer's instructions will be to you, kind of in a shorthand, or they'll be above the, the, the staff here. So this says the band is in right here after this first eight bars, uh, and you're to ad lib on the cymbals, but generally lay out for uh, eight, another eight bars to the A section, then 16 bars more of laying out. The sax melody will um, be heard here. Continue to ad lib on the cymbals, no problem. 14 bars, don't play. Little uh, glasses there means heads up, something is coming that's important. Look at that, change in time signatures. So this time signature means there's six eighth notes in the bar. This one means there's four quarter notes in the bar. Some slash, nota slash notation, this just means you're free to play. It assumes that you know what a shuffle means. But uh, most notably, the dotted eighth equals a quarter note now. Um, solo. So you're to, you're to solo here. Here's a dynamic instruction right here. It's a crescendo, so you're getting louder to a forte. Uh, and you got to hit this shot on uh, the let of four. Or because this is swinging, this would be the, the and of four. But one thing you need to know about reading um, charts that have a swing feel in it is that uh, your eighth notes, just a sec here, your eighth notes, it's better if I explain it like this. Oh man, hard to do that with your left hand. Bear with me, bear with me. Bang. Bang. Voila. So, your eights are swung, so where that if this was straight, it would be one and two and three and in music that swings, this becomes one and two and three and four. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. That's what this means right here. One triplet. Okay, little diversion. Back on track. Where were we? Right here. We were getting louder into a B section. That's a, the sign. El signo. We're going to be coming back to this thing, but just note it. Uh, we're in a forte, we're in a halftime shuffle now. All right, note these little accents here. Got to play this little accent a very particular way. Um, there's nothing superfluous in a chart like this. This is an, a purposefully underwritten chart, which means there's not a lot of excess information in here. But you should know, if you don't know, what this little accent means compared to, say, that little accent. They have different names, and I don't know what they are, frankly, but go and find out. Uh, okay, so, repeat the previous bar. There's that shot on the lead of four again. I think that means similarly, like just continue on. Play five more bars. Got a fill, got a shot. There's a, that's a shot on the trip of three, and then four, and then the let of four. All right, different accents here. Play, another shot, repeat, previous bar, repeat, previous bar, repeat. Ooh, into the coda. Excellent. Note, got some whole notes in here. Decrescendo, sense a different section coming on. It's telling me to keep my eyes open. Bam, 6 8. Different time signature. The quarter note now is a dotted eighth note. Ad lib, do what you want. Play eight bars. We're into mezzo piano. Okay, that's moderately quiet. Crescendo after the eight bars to a C section. Ooh, that's disgusting. Mezzo forte, moderately loud. Okay, we're grooving. We're playing 16 bars. There's a piano solo happening. Now another 14 bars. Heads up, because we're into 4-4. Four, four. The dotted eighth now equals a quarter note. We've got an ensemble figure here. The whole band's going to hit this shot gradually. Get louder. One, two, three trip, four trip, and... and and, and bang. So that's one, two, three trip, four trip, let one, let two, let three, let four, bang, like that. 
uh, getting louder into a forte. D section, uh, sax continues. We're in the halftime shuffle. Shot on the lead of four. Cool, play six more. Uh, some more ensemble figures here. Do -do 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 -do. Play three bars. Now, do what you want here, hit that shot. First ending. Okay, beautiful. So we're gonna be coming back to this section right here because that's a forward, oops, sorry. Forward repeat bar, so we're gonna come back to that. First ending, how long is this guy? One, two, got all these shots that we've got to hit. Still in the first ending, three, four bars. There's the backwards repeat bar. We go back to D, D -d 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 -d, play six. So there's eight, one plus six. Another one that's eight, play three, and another one that's four. We've already done the first ending, so we go to the second ending, bang. Here it is, second ending. Now what's up? Keep on going. Straight into the E section, okay. Now what's going on? Forward repeat bar, we got uh, four times through this section. All right, so we go through it four times. We've got a solo, hit that shot, and then into three, four coming up. Three, four. So this is the F section. Uh, the dot, or the eighth note triplet equals a sixteenth note. We're in a three, four time signature that's three quarter notes in the bar. We're uh, still soloing. Ah, the bass is going to play this figure right here. So that's one triplet, two, e, and a, three, e, and a, like that, and that just repeats. So it's a cool little four bar section that repeats six times. See that? We're soloing. We come out of that, still in three, four, switch to four, four. So <laughs> the uh, 16th note becomes the uh, eighth note triplet. Four, four, hit that sucker. Ooh, look at that. DS L coda. Okay, so you go to the sign and then you go to the coda. So that means you gotta go all the way back to the sign. Bang, the B section. Till we find the coda section, or the coda sign, rather. So you play all this, do 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 do, five bars. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, all this, yep, 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 yep. Bang, there's the coda. The coda means tail in Latin, I believe, so you gotta find this tail end of the of the song. Here it is. Double forte, so fortissimo, it's loud. Uh, fill it up, so you hit these accents, fill it up, keep the band together. All right, yep, getting quieter. Oh, heads up, we're into six eighths, the quarter equals a dotted eighth. Ad lib to the end, do what you want. Getting quieter at the end of this seven bar section right here. Another seven bars, and this guy. One and two and three and four and five and six and double bar at the end, fine, that's the end, and that's a fermata, which means you hold this note. Whew, okay, read and chart. Tommy Igo put this book together. This is the Groove Essentials, uh, extremely famous, extremely awesome um, package. Get DVDs with it. Um, actually, no, the DVD is separate, but uh, go for it. Check it out. Have fun. Okay, just gonna take you through this really quickly. For drummers, trying to understand sustain a little bit. Uh, a lot of times when we're, as drummers, reading rhythms, we're not really concerned about sustain because the drums don't sustain. So this guy would be one and a two and a three and four, like that. But I'm gonna take you through whole notes. This is all in four four, by the way. Whole note, half note, half note triplets, quarters, quarter note triplets, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth notes, sixteenth note triplets, and uh, thirty second notes. <laughs> Some of them are kind of are kind of messed there, but anyway, that's that's eight per beat times four, so there's thirty two in one bar. Okay, then I'm gonna go backwards. But you can hear that I'm gonna decide on a tempo, and then I'm gonna play this whole thing. So I'm gonna go pretty slow. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, triplet, three, triplet, four, triplet. One, two, three, four. One, triplet, two, triplet, three, triplet, four, triplet, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, triplet, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, 
to help good luck let's say your groove is um do do ga gunch gunch go ga so what i would do is like that do do ba gunch gunch go ga i only write the rest in when i need them uh, and I need them because of these two sixteens like that to tell me where a three is. I don't really go rely on um, you know uh, how this note corresponds to that note vertically or yeah vertically. Like I don't really li worry about the, them lining up. You know, um, let's say the beat is a triplet thing. So that would be. And you'll notice that the first thing I do is I take care of the right hand part if the right hand part is continuous, um, like with a million of our grooves. Actually, the first thing I'll do is I write the bar, and if I need the time signature, I'm going to do that. That see, that's one down, and then the four is that way. So I'll do the bar. And if it's straight eights for a bar, then I, I do my notes, and then like that. The other bar, like that. Uh, and then I do the melody of the kick and the, the snare. Most of the time the snare is going to land on two and four, no problem. And the kick actually plays the, the lick a lot. Um, so if the, if the lick is da-na, 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 no. So on the kick, in, in between the kick and snare, we got dun dun da dun 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 like that dun 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 same deal when writing stuff or beaming notes together with the stems going down I do the notes first and then like that sixteenths like that just a time saver um, rests do them fast there's an eighth rest there's a quarter rest sixteenth rest half rest whole rest um, what else? You know, half notes. Really quick, right? What else? Um, your notation, just personally, I'm just speaking personally, these are my preferences. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just, you have to be able to read your own handwriting. So, um, let me think. But it is, it is a language. So, let me throw a word out there. Uh, hmm, give me a couple words. Check this out. See, what does that say? It says science fiction. It doesn't take long to read it because we're around English every day and we can read it whether we like it or not. So 
um, one of the cool things about notation is if you spend enough time around it, well, you can <laughs> you can uh, see rhythm and know exactly how that sounds just by looking at it. That's kind of the whole point. Um, or how about it's kind of hard to write this and hold it at the same time. But yeah. Anyway, so that's one triplet or. Da -da -pa. Um, or check this out. Da da da. One e and a. Uh. You know these guys are not connected. If they were connected, it would be pretty obvious. You know. Okay. I think I would write a little bit more clearly than I am now. It's kind of hard to look at the camera and and hold this thing and look at it at the same time. But yeah, see that's a little bit better example. Um, or one and a, one e and a, or let's say um, one e and a. How do you do that? Well, you do sixteenth rest, then the note, then an eighth, then a sixteenth. Or you can do it sixteenth rest, the note, sixteenth rest, and another note like that. Except it takes a lot more time. Um, yeah. So there you go. Don't get too caught up on. Um, why some things are written differently than uh, than other things. Um, there's a huge advantage in in being able to write that out and not worry about how long that note actually sustains for. We don't have to deal with sustain a lot on the drums. We do a little bit, um, especially if that's like a uh, ensemble figure and it's we have to support that uh, the length of that eighth note, um, you know, all the way through. But if we're just talking about the hits, then this is a great way to get this the hits down when the actual hits happen really fast. So there you go. I hope this stuff helps. Um, go slow, obviously. Uh, enjoy it. Have fun. Good luck. See you next time. Be great to to know what quarter notes sound like, obviously. For those in a bar, um, eighth notes. See, I'm writing these nice and quick. Um, quarter note triplets. There's six of these in one bar of 4-4. Four, four. In other words, there's three, this is three over two. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, like that. What else do we have? We've got um, eighth note triplets. You could think of these as twelfth notes, actually, because just one of them is one twelfth of a quarter. Oh, sorry, of a, of a whole note. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. See the four sections? One, two, three, four. In other words, we're dividing each beat, each quarter note, into thirds. So one of these is a third of a quarter. Um, what else? Very common subdivisions. We've got the half note triplet. There's three of those. Over four beats. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, bang. Um, we've got the sixteenth note. Two, three, four. So we're splitting the beat into into quarters here. So a quarter of a quarter is a sixteenth. And there's sixteen of these in a bar. A four four. These are very, very common. Um, yeah, so a sixteenth is a sixteenth of a whole note. What else? Uh, sixteenth note triplets, so splitting the quarter into sixths. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Six, 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 like that. So one and two and three and four and and we've got thirty second notes. One or 
there's eight of these per quarter. Okay, I'm obviously writing this stuff pretty quick, but see, there's a big eight over them. And if there isn't, then a 30-second note's got three flags. Sixteenths has got two flags. When you beam two sixteenth notes together, bang, like that. When you beam 30 seconds together, they're like that. 30 second beamed to a sixteenth, looks like that. Um, what else? Sixteenth note triplets, eighth note triplets, quarter note triplets, half note triplets, eighth notes, quarter notes, uh, 16th notes, 32nd notes, those are the big ones. Rests, there's a quarter note rest, it's kind of like a Z and a C. A couple different ways of doing that one. But the most important thing is that you get close enough and you know what it means, what the symbol means. That's how I do an eighth, that's how I do a sixteenth, that's how I do a half note rest, that's a whole note rest, you can also do a whole note rest like that. Um, yeah, so I hope that's a help. Good luck, go slow with this stuff. There's a lot of information to know, um, but uh, it's definitely something that you can, um, uh, you know, get a lot better at if you put the time into it and, uh, you know, and believe that, um, that uh, you can make sense of it. It's just like a language, there's rules, uh, and it takes time to, for that stuff to sink in. Good luck, have fun.